Look, I'm going live. Going live, you guys. I'm going to turn this off and we're going to go live, okay? Hey, you guys. Go ahead and meet me on. I'm in two platforms at the moment. I'm on here, but I'm also live on Facebook in our group. I'm going to turn this off. Go ahead and disconnect from here and meet me over in the Facebook live, okay? Uh, I got one person who sent me a message that they're going to go from YouTube literally over to Facebook now. Thank you, Ashley. Here we go. Okay, you guys, there we go. So the internet's being stupid. Hopefully my phone will not continue to be stupid. So I'm going to switch over. Let me switch my, position myself a little bit different. Here we go. We're just going to let you guys come on in. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on in, you guys. Come on in. I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes. So if you're catching me here, I'll update the why we're on, I'm on here live. But if you're catching me here, it's because we switched over from the broadcast system that I usually use. Because the devil is a liar. He thought he was going to try this tonight. We're not doing this tonight. So I decided I'm just going to go ahead and come on live, okay? So I'm going to come on live um, and go from there. So there we go. Come on, you guys. Let me know that you have made the switch over. If you did, were not watching the Emergence 2021 and you happened to come on in, then maybe the Lord allowed it to happen so that you can get this word. So let's go, you guys. Um, let me shift this over. We just going to make an adjustment and do what we need to do. The devil is a liar. So here we go. We good, everybody? Let me know you're here. Let me know you hear me. And we're going to go ahead. Okay, here we go. So anyhow, if you're just jumping on, welcome to Emergence 2021. Um, I'm letting people have a chance to jump over from where the system that we were watching on to right here. The devil is a liar. We're going to keep on going. So I was I left off by saying that the Lord had given me a word. OK, I did a quick recap, but I left off by saying that the Lord gave me a word last week and it was really heavy. And he had told me he said to me that um, my grace is sufficient. And he said that Paul kept asking me, he said, Paul asked me literally three times to remove the thorn. And I told Paul that my grace is sufficient for him. And, and I'm like, yes, Lord, I know, I, I know the scripture. What are we, where are we going? Because he kept, it was like, you ever have God repeat something to you? And I'm like, okay, obviously I'm missing what you're saying, God. So I'm gonna wait right here until you tell me. So he kept going back to Paul asked me three times and I told him no. Paul asked me three times and I told him no. And then it was like, Paul didn't come back a fourth time and ask him. Paul didn't ask a fourth time, not one bit. And if it's synonymous to the garden experience with Jesus asking his father to let the cup pass by, right? I don't want to do this, but not my will, your will. And so Paul didn't ask a fourth time, okay? That's the Holy Spirit said, saying, I'm like, okay, God, obviously. Now, we went back and forth for several days, and it wasn't until last night that it was like, whoa, okay. What he kept saying to me is people are stuck right there. We quote, my grace is sufficient, right? That his strength is perfected in our weakness. We quote that. We quote it all the time. But he said, people are stuck at asking for the thorn to be removed. And I'm like, what are you saying? He said, people are stuck. They literally have become so in fo focused, so caught up in the thorn. They've been caught up in the problem. They've been caught up in the situation. And they've been begging me to change the situation, not understanding that I'm not trying to change the situation. I'm trying to change them. Oh, I'm like, Jesus, he goes, too many of my children right now are focused I'm the problem and that yes prayer yes all of that and they think because they're praying diligently that maybe something might be wrong that maybe God's not hearing them he's saying literally you're stuck in asking for the sufficiency of my grace to remove something that I let be there to build you I said whoa so what you want me to tell them he said stop asking people he said stop people stop asking me to remove something that I so specifically told you I wasn't changing I wasn't changing it. I'm not changing it right now. I'm not removing. I'm not removing the thorn. I'm not removing. Exactly, Kanisha. They're literally stuck because people do not want to go to another place. Literally don't want to go to another place because of fear, crossroad, familiarity, and new. The new can be real. We talked about this literally. Yes, Dory, I heard that you taught on this because Ashley told me and I haven't had a chance to watch it, but I'm about to watch it. So listen to me, you guys. He said, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. I'm not moving it. I'm not moving it. It serves a purpose. It serves a purpose. It serves a purpose. I said, okay, then what happened? 
So I went back to look. So what did Paul do once God told him no? That's what I went back to look. I said, okay, what did Paul, what was Paul's corresponding action to the denial of the request to move the thorn? What was Paul's action? It goes to proceed to say that Paul said at that point, once I asked for that thing to be removed, literally, he says, how does he say it? He said, he said right here. So most gladly, most gladly, Paul says, this is Paul's corresponding action to the denial of his request. Man, I hope that you're with us on Friday nights because this portion about intimacy, about walking with him, about getting to a portion that even if he does not do it for you, will you still trust him? Even if he don't change it, even if he don't do it, even if he doesn't, do you still trust him enough to do it if he ever wanted to? Do you still trust him to be God? He said, so Paul's corresponding reaction or action to the denial of his request was most gladly. Not I have an attitude and therefore I'm just going to go back. <laughs> not not I'm going to put my position where I don't even want to hear what you have to say, God. No, that's not Paul's course. But now Paul is mature in this walk. He says, no, most gladly, therefore. There you go, Antoinette. I would rather boast, boast, boast. Boast literally means to bring glory to something, okay? About my weakness. I'm going to break these words down for you. I promise y'all because this is, this. when I tell you this word, by the time I was done studying this last night, I did not even think I could get up out of this chair. I literally felt like I needed to lay out. And my daughter called me and we were talking about this. And she's like, mommy, what's wrong? I said, no, I was studying this. And she's like, oh, okay. Because she could see it all over me. It was so heavy. So if we get nothing past nothing, I need y'all to hear this if we get nothing else because this is why you came here tonight so right so he says I'm, I'm literally going to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ may dwell in me therefore I will delight in my weakness and that's what he said so the corresponding action of Paul's response literally literally was to say okay then I'm gonna boast about what I can't do so he said to me I don't even know if he said it to me or if it was the realization of what it was that was being said to me okay Here's the problem. This is how he gave it to me. I don't know who this is for. He says, the problem is, is that religious structures have not allowed people to be transparent enough to walk in their weakness. I'm going to let you sit with that for a minute. I'm going to let you sit with that for a minute. That religious structures have not allowed people to walk in the transparency or the uh, uh, authenticity or the vulnerability of their weakness. They haven't. They have taught us, you, especially if you've done leadership, hold it together. Don't let the people see you this. Make sure you vent up. Don't let people know what you're going through. Get it together quickly. Don't. And, and then don't, it's not even about necessarily always getting to the root. It literally is not what Paul did. Because I've been in positions, because I'm a big cry baby. I am the worshiper. I will fall out. You won't know whether I'm happy or sad because it'll be the same tears. I promise y'all, I will be fall out somewhere. I'm a worshiper in my core. Literally, I would have people early in my walk be like, are you okay? I'm like, why? What's going on with you? Something got to be going on with you. Like, what did you do? What are you talking about? Like, because you see tears or because you see me coming to the altar or because you see me in a stance of surrender because I can't carry the weight of the situation and I know the one who can. So, but you don't, it's uncomfortable for my vulnerability and transparency is uncomfortable. So Paul's corresponding action to the denial of his request was authentic transparency in his weakness. I'm going to tell you about my weakness. I'm going to tell you, just like he says in Romans 7, literally, when I want to do what I want to do that's good, when I want to do what's good, literally, I don't. What a wretched man I am. But chapter 8, there is no condemnation for those that are Christ in Christ Jesus. Literally, Paul knew that literally, it is in the death of the flesh. It is literally... Like in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus says, if this cup ain't go past, we'll let your will be done. Because if you kill me in this, you have a plan to resurrect me. And that's the problem, is that most of you, thank you, Holy Spirit, have forgotten the goal, have forgotten the plan, have forgotten the promise, have forgotten that truly the reward is not just diligently seeking him the reward is him i'm gonna say that again he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him the problem is is that we forget he is the reward that he is the very reward so paul's corresponding action is to boast about his weakness so let me break this down because i'm telling you this word now now i'm gonna prove what it is that he told me 
because this is how him and I speak. He gives me this revelation and I go back to the word because I need to make sure I'm not crazy and I'm hearing him correct because this is still flesh. I'm not perfect. I'm not Jesus. Always cross-reference whether it's you believe you're hearing the Lord. Make sure that I ask God. Always confirm. Give me scripture. If a prophetic word comes, please go back and confirm that with God, with Holy Spirit and in the word. Okay, so here we go. They ain't ready for people who are willing to walk in their boat. Man, they ain't ready, but the people are perishing, uh, uh, Tiffany. People are perishing, so those that know and don't do, blood on their hands. I refuse to walk with blood on my hands, y'all. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse to walk with blood on my hands. No. Uh-uh. This is why we're seeing the shift that we're seeing. This is why we went through 2019 and 2020 with Holy Spirit literally saying, I'm about to demolish church religion and the way that you've seen it for so long. This is why we're walking into a season of emergence. This is why God said, I'm shutting the voices of people who have mishandled my people. I am literally pulling my people from places and structures and religious places that have misled my people. He tired. Go back and watch the original uh, version of uh, Emergence 2020 in January. God is tired and frustrated with the way people are being treated. And I don't know what to say. I'm not going to be, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm, 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 I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Trails of, come on. See, y'all going to make me shout. And see, this way I can see who's commenting. Okay, let me stay focused. Here we go. So then I went back to the word. Okay. So now, see, now I wrote all my little comments and notes in the little banners that were cute. Now I got to go off my paper. But it's cool because I've been doing this a long time before we had a little broadcasting system with paper. So let's talk about it. Because of this extraordinary greatness, I'm in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 is where I'm starting, okay? Because of the extraordinary greatness of the revelations for this reason. So Paul says, because of my relationship with him, because of the things that he literally, literally has entrusted me seeing, the things that I've seen, the, the relationship I have with him, the intimacy, the place, go back and watch last Friday's of Bible study, these levels of intimacy. Remember, we got there, chat, we talked about that fourth dimension. Y'all got real quiet. Like y'all were like... <laughs> Uh, that type of intimacy? No, wait a minute. Literally. So he says, because of my intimacy, my experience with him, he literally says, I have lit for that reason to keep him from exalting himself. Okay. From lifting himself up. Now, I'm going to be transparent. I've been in positions. God has given me a glimpse of what he's called me to do. And God was gracious enough to yoke me out of that seven, eight, nine years ago because I had not yet developed the skill set within my soul. Could I pull it off? Sure. Sure could, sure could pull it off because I'm cold at what I thought I could do. But what about when he strips you of your ability to get to your integrity? Yeah, I said that. Some of y'all wondering why that had to end because your character, your integrity, you would have exalted yourself. And God says, I can't place you in front of my people nor let you handle the delicate things until I deal with the inward things. And that is grace. It is not punishment. That is such an essence of a father's love. Was I mad? Sure was. Was I feeling some kind of way? Sure was. And when I got there and in my brokenness, all that that was broken literally came out in a pond. Wait till I tell you, Ashley, these and you see that word pruning. Wait until you see these definitions. And if y'all throw your phone, I am not responsible. I mean, <laughs> y'all throw your phones, that's on you. I'm not responsible. So he says to keep him from exalting himself, right? So technically it was given with a purpose for a purpose, right? He says, because of that reason, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. He said it twice. To keep me from exalting myself, there was given to me. I understand why it was given to me and I understand the purpose. And it was both to keep me low and to keep me humble. The secret place. This is when you know you stay humble, stay hidden. You ain't missing nothing. I don't know who this is for. Don't you dare pick up the phone and call them. Don't you dare show up at that place because you think you're missing something. Oh, I am in somebody's business tonight. Don't you dare think you're missing something. You're itching. We talked about this last week. The weather about to change. The sun coming out. We about to people thinking we out the danger fully of this corona thing. So people acting a hot mess at full. And people like, 
Now we at, we at the intersection of familiarity and newness. Now what you gonna choose? You gonna go ahead and choose to go ahead and make that phone call? I don't know what to tell you. I don't, tell, don't do it. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. So here we go. That's what Paul is told. So let's break this down. <whistles> Come on, Maria. Let's break this down. He said, was given to me a thorn. Okay, here we go. The teacher of me is a pun. Look, let me tell you, a thorn, a thorn, a thorn. Literally, the definition is an annoyance. It is literally a physical ailment. It literally is that wood piece. I had a thorn about two weeks ago. That thing was irritating the heck out of my finger. Now, there would be times that if I didn't touch it in the right spot, that literally I may not be able to tell it was there. But when I touched something, it lit up my entire hand. It's like, well, no, this everything going to stop. Everything is stopping because I need to remove this thorn. Everything was stopping. I also have a one of my children, a 17-year-old son, okay, had a, a thorn in his finger. Now, <laughs> that boy for two days was like, mom, please. Please, please, please help take this out. I'm like, Rick, you got that thing so far in there that you may have to cut your finger to literally get that thing out. And he looked at me like, what? Now, this kid is not, he doesn't like all the extra, <laughs> right? So he let, he told me, leave it alone. But every time he touched it, he's like, it's bothering me. Yesterday, yesterday he comes home from school. He says, before you even take me to work, get the tweezers. I already started cutting it. Get this thing out. A thorn. Anybody ever have a thorn? That thing is, it hurts. It hurts. It goes into the flesh, like underneath all there. And it'll be okay if you like don't touch it sometimes because it also could get infected. It's, it hurts. That tiny little piece of wood up underneath your skin is going to annoy you. Now, let me get to the root word of what the um, of what thorn means. You guys have to trust my teaching in this. If you haven't been with me long enough, it's going to come its pieces. But when I tell you he make this thing come together, um, don't throw your phone. Please don't throw your phone. Okay. Thorn, the root word of the word thorn. Two words, one meaning to limp or lean, okay? Thorn, limp or lean. The next part of the word means to be apparent or it's, it's apparent. It's, it's um, evident that there's a limp or a lean. <sighs> Settle down, Maria. You shouted and fell out yesterday. The thorn, root word, two words, to limp or to lean. And it is apparent that you're limping or leaning. So this thorn wasn't something he can put some charm on and people couldn't see it. This thorn, when I read this, was almost synonymous to the limp when we seen the wrestling before the crossing over. Right? The, the This is a limp or a lean. Okay? The thorn, it is an annoyance. It's a limp or a lean that is apparent. Okay, come on, you guys, stay with me here. In my flesh, right? Okay, Spl come on, splinter. Girl, teach. Okay, the word, it's a thorn. It is something that leaves me with an apparent limp or lean, okay? In my flesh, okay? The word messenger, I know that it reads a messenger of God, but this is why you got to break. I mean, a messenger of Satan is the way the scripture reads, but you have to break the wording down. Okay. Follow me. This is why I'm slowing down. You see, I'm, I'm slowing down. I'm, I'm taking my deep breath. The word messenger in that scripture, that word messenger, you go into studylight.org or whatever you use to study literally means messenger. It is an envoy. Look, I'm glad I printed these notes out. One sent by God or an angel. But this says it's a messenger of Satan. Messenger, okay? The root word of messenger. The root word of messenger means to lead or bring into a destination. Y'all, oh my God. See, I see where I'm going. So I'm trying not to fall out my chair again. So the thorn is an apparent limp or lean. Given to me, right, a messenger of Satan, but messenger technically was sent by God or at least approved by God. Job, the conversation, have you considered my servant jo Job, Paul, whoever, right? Right, a messenger with the root word of messenger. You guys got to talk to me. Let me know you can because I don't want to rush it until y'all like making sure you're digesting piece by piece. Messenger root word means to lead and bring into a destination. Okay, of Satan. 
Okay, just like we know the names of God, sometimes you have to know the names of your adversary, okay? Because Satan literally in this context means adversary, okay? Adversary. Adversary or accuser, okay? Hostile opponent. If I give you the word adversary, that is a legal term. Listen to me why he said what he said to me in the beginning. If you're just logging on, the Lord gave me a word that said my people are stuck begging for me to remove something that I'm not removing. Okay? He literally said, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He's the adversary. Adversary is a legal term. Courtroom of heaven. I've taught this before. Okay? Yeah, you got to know the name of the accuser because who you fighting? And everything with the name got to bow to the name of Jesus. So at least call that thing out and call it out accurately. Let me stay focused. Here we go. So adversary. So somewhere in the courts of heaven, there was some legal decree made that the enemy had all types of permission to let that thorn be apparent in Paul's flesh because it was sent to do something. Okay. Okay. Adversary. Legal term. This is why you're stuck and he can't remove it because there is already a legal decree that that thing has a purpose. It may not feel good. It may not look good. It may not make sense. But God said, I've established a legal degree in all, a legal decree and your prayers can't change that. That's why I'm telling you that my grace is sufficient. But you're praying for you stuck right there. Like that's not going to change. Like you have to know what he is saying to you. So, so, so here we go. You guys. The thorn, a parent, limp or lean, a messenger, something approved by the Lord. But the root word means to get me to a place, right? It's meant to get me to a place of the adversary to do what? God, you let them do what? Huh? Yeah. To torment him, Paul says. To torment me. That's what scripture says. And literally torment, you guys. Oh my God, this is so good, y'all. Literally torment. Means to strike with blows. Literally means to mistreat, to beat you up. It's like you walking around with a spiritual black eye. Mistreat, to torment. Literally to beat you up, beat you down maybe. Literally. So this apparent limp or lean from the messenger's of the adversary. Something that happened in the transaction in the heavenlies that was allowed to happen. Was sent to literally beat me up. <laughs> Can I give you the root word of this? This is so good, y'all. The root word of torment. I'm going to give myself some money. I'm, I'm, I'm promise y'all. I'm in this space and I can't run. The root word. The root word. The root word of the word torment. Huh, what was that word I told you, Ashley, to remember? What was that word I told you to remember, Ashley? I know the comments are on the lag, but Ashley, do you remember the word that you typed in there? I said, you're going to shout for real when I said, I said, when I get back to that, I, I don't know if I can even wait for you to type it back in. So I'm going to start with the bottom part of the list and see if you get to type it in before I get there. But the root word of the word torment, the same torment that came to beat you up. There it is, Ashley. Thank you. Pruning, the root word means to prune, to restrain, to correct, to check, and to curtail. So the very same thing that's coming to beat me up, maybe it's coming to, because the thorn is where? In my flesh. So maybe that thing that is tormenting me is beating my flesh up enough that is teaching me the position of those things that are being beat off of me literally means to prune, to restrain, literally is teaching me something. It is removing something. It is literally correcting something. Exactly. The location of that thorn. Thank you, Dory. Literally means that it's revealing the unsurrendered areas. Takesha, what were we talking about just today? The unsurrendered areas. It means to check. You know, you know when you go to check somebody. Be checking somebody ain't always cute. When you got to check somebody, it ain't always cute. Now, you might be able to check somebody in love, but they walk away knowing that they've been checked. So maybe there's an area of your life and in your flesh that the enemy has been given permission to put a tormentor right there so that it will keep you on your face, reminding you that you, that you are unable to do this of your own accord. Literally, the root word of torment means to restrain, to prune, to correct, to curtail, to check, to check, right? I'm just teaching you. I'm just giving you. I'm just relaying a message. I'm just the male person so I can sleep tonight. I don't even know if we're going to get to anything else. This is the message so I can sleep. I've been holding this for too long. Here we go. To torment me. To do what? To keep me from exalting myself. 
literally to keep me from exalting myself. When you look at the word exalt, it literally means to give whatever you're lifting up glory. So instead of me being able to give myself glory or to think I got it all together or to let myself think that I know what I'm doing, the Lord says, no, I'm going to check you. You may not like it. I may not change that, but that thing will let you know that you need me. That thing right there is going to let you know. What 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 does he say? Oh, he's, the, his grace, but, but I don't want to jump ahead of myself. Verse 8. Paul says, concerning this, this is where y'all are stuck. Concerning this, I pleaded, I begged, I begged, I summoned, I summoned. I called out with a loud voice. And it, when I read that, I thought about Christ on the cross. I literally did when he cried out, why have you forsaken me? Literally, it's that same calling out. You know, you've been there. God, why? Why can't they get it together? Why can this change? Why is this happening? Lord, can you please? I'm begging. I'm beseeching. I'm laying out. I'm in my prayer closet. I'm laying out. Daddy, please remove this cup. Daddy, please remove this cup because even Christ got to know because there's a purpose and there's a plan. Oh my God. He literally says, I pleaded with the Lord three times. Some scholars believe that three is just indicative to tie it into the Garden of Gethsemane. But they believe that Paul was praying consistently for a time about having that thorn removed for that thing to change. And he said that it might go away. And he said that the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is perfected in weakness. Can I please tell you that when you read it in the Greek, you know, you have to, when you go do it into, into the interlinear Bible and you look at how it's actually there, it reads this way. And he said to me, suffice you the grace of me. This is going to make so much sense, y'all. Look, this is going to make so much sense. He said, the direct translation reads he said to me, suffice you the grace of me. Okay, so we talked about this apparent limp and lean, the thorn, okay, this annoyance, right, that was sent in some legal transaction that happened in the heavenlies because it was sent for a purpose to beat me up or beat me down or get me to a place at some areas that needed to be pruned, right, to keep me from getting caught up in myself. And that Paul cried out, summoned, begged the Lord, and that the Lord responded and said to him, suffice you the grace of me it didn't make sense to me until i broke down guess what i did i went back so here we go y'all with me tell me you with me so here we go we're gonna turn the corner because this is where people are stuck there begging but when you stuck begging for him to change something that has already been declared and decreed because he's trying to get you somewhere the very thing that you are negating trying to just let him do is the very thing the very thing that is going to indicate your growth you think your growth is in the books that you've read you think your growth is in the people you may not have cussed out this week your growth will be indicated when you let that thorn do what it needs to do when you quit trying to tell people other things and let God do what he needs to do you don't give yourself an infection messing with that thing. Okay, so here we go. My grace is sufficient, or he said, suffice you the grace of me. So let's look at the word suffice. Okay, suffice you the grace of me, suffice. The word suffice, to be possessed of unfailing strength. Y'all, like I almost want to take my hair down and I'll be looking crazy. This is how heavy this thing is on me. Literally suffice. Suffice means to be possessed of unfailing strength. Suffice means to be strong, to be enough, to defend, to ward off, to be satisfied, to be content. Okay? It also has this idea of the raising of a barrier. Maybe a raising of a standard. Right? It means to properly ward off. It means to avail, to be sufficient, to be enough. Okay? Okay, you guys with me? Let me make sure because here we go. I don't want to. The root word means to elevate, to raise up, to lift up, to draw up, to take upon oneself and carry what has been raised up to bear this word is so heavy on me and this has to be for somebody's like life type of thing because every time i get here like i get super emotional um 
It means to move from its place, the root word of suffice. To remove, to carry off, to carry away with one. To appropriate what is taken. To take away from another what is or what is committed to him. To take by force, to take and apply to any use. To take from among the living either a natural death or some type of, of violent death or something to cause to cease. Let me back up, back that thing up, Maria. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Suffice you the grace of me. Suffice you the grace of me. No, I'm not removing it because my grace is sufficient. Suffice you. Suffice you the grace of me. Suffice you the grace of me, right? Suffice. Possessing an unfailed strength. Okay? I'm going to keep reading it slow because I know I, it took, listen. Okay, suffice means, he says to me that there's already a possession of an unfailing strength. He says, suffice, there's already a strength within you. Okay, suffice, there's already enough. Suffice, I'm already defending. Suffice, there's already a warding off of what you think is about to take you out. Suffice. Literally, I'm already raising a, a standard around you. I'm already putting a barrier around you. Suffice means there's going to be an avail for my will. Suffice literally means, let's get down to it. When that thing starts to drown you, if you allow yourself to be humble, I will elevate you. Suffice, suffice, suffice you, the grace of me. Suffice, suffice, suffice you, the grace of me. Suffice, there will be a raising up of you there will be a drawing you out of the situation there will be me carrying you literally i will bear you up okay i will remove you from a place i will take you to a place i will carry you i will appropriate whatever needs to happen i will apply whatever needs to be applied it literally means a death of something people want the power of the resurrection but won't don't want the fellowship of the suffering or the death that comes with that suffices you that's just suffice. That's just suffice. That's the promise. My grace is sufficient. My grace is able to lift you, to keep you, to carry you, to move you, to strengthen you. My grace suffice you. Suffice you. My grace. Oh! Suffice you the grace. Here's the word grace. We think we know what the grace, the word grace means. Grace. Okay? Grace. We got suffice? Everybody got suffice? Okay. Grace. Grace suffice you okay strengthen you right suffice you the grace of me suffice you so suffice you the grace so i'm strengthening you i'm uplifting you i'm protecting you i'm warding off all this stuff i'm defending you i know it don't feel good but i'm doing something in you i'm the suffice the sufficiency of my grace so what is grace because it is the grace that is suffice. <laughs> It is the grace that's sufficient, okay? The saint, you're not strengthening yourself. It's the grace that is strengthening. It is the grace that is warding off. It is the grace that is keeping. It is the grace that is fighting. It is the grace that is raising up a barrier. It is the grace that is lifting you out of that. It is the grace that is allowing you to die to yourself. It is the grace that is literally that will take the appropriate action necessary justice to defend you. It is the grace. What is the grace? Grace. That which affords joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, loveliness of speech, grace, goodwill, loving kindness, favor of the merciful kindness of by which God exerting his holy influence upon souls turns them to Christ. What is the purpose of all this? This thorn and this messenger was to get me to a place. Right? It was tormenting to help me prune some things to get me to a place. It literally is doing a work in me that I may not necessarily like. But but what the grace, the grace, what is doing it? And, and grace has purpose too. Um, because it is the merciful kindness by God, by which God, by which God. So it is the vehicle in which God exerts his holy influence upon souls and turns them to Christ. Keeps, strengthens increases them in their faith, their knowledge, their affection, and kindles in them this ability to practice or live these Christian virtues. It is the grace that strengthens. That's what it says, right? This grace is sufficient, right? This grace is God's holy influence upon our souls. It is the benefit. It is the reward. 
It is the service. It is the favor. It is the recompense. It is literally the state of kindness and favor towards someone. It literally is with focus on the benefit given The benefit given or the extension of the gift, the benefit, the credit, the words of kindness, the benefit, I'm going to keep saying the benefit, the blessing. Holy Spirit showed me at that very moment, at that very moment, because I wasn't going to throw my phone because I just had to buy a new one and I don't got money to buy another one, so I didn't throw my phone. (laughs) That his grace within us is the very residence of his spirit. His spirit is the grace. So he says, although that thing externally apparent, there's something internally that is so much greater. Greater is he who is in me than he who's in the world. Right? Grace. Grace. Grace is the exudance. It is It is Holy Spirit within you. So he says, my grace is sufficient. Suffice you the grace of me. Suffice you the presence of me. Suffice you. Be strengthened by my spirit within you. Be strengthened and encouraged that my spirit resides in you. And the very spirit that resides in you will intercede for you when you don't even know what you need. This is scripture. This makes stuff like this. When you look at it and receive the revelation, this starts to let pieces of scripture make sense and to intertwine. My grace is sufficient. Suffice to you my grace, my grace be strengthened by my spirit that resides in you. The very essence of who I am, the very essence of who I am is what will strengthen you. So when you get out the way of your situation, get in the trunk. Don't even try to ride in the back seat of the car because you can't handle that ride yet. When you die to yourself, when you quit trying to defend yourself in situations where I just want for my my spirit within you to be exalted but you keep raising up you keep wanting to do what you want to do you keep coming up out the secret place the secret place allows you to be hidden in him and guess what you see in order to be in the shadow of the almighty you have to be overshadowed by the thing that you're in the shadow of so to be in the shadow you have to be overshadowed by god but nobody likes to be overshadowed we what we think we're missing something we missing some enough is within you That thorn ain't meant to kill you. You focus on the wrong thing. That thorn is meant to grow you. That thorn is meant to keep you from taking yourself out of purpose. Huh? That hurt. (laughs) That thorn is literally meant to keep you from taking yourself out of purpose. I'm going to say that one more time. Slow down, Maria. That thorn is meant to keep you from taking yourself out of purpose. God, it has a perfected plan. Let's talk about the word perfected. Here we go. I'm almost done. Maybe. Here we go. I don't care. I'm going to get this word out. <laughs> okay? My 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 grace is sufficient. Suffice to you my grace. Right? Right? For power is perfected in weakness. For power, power, dunamis power is perfected in weakness. Okay? So we got the limp. We got the thorn. We got the adversary thing that's meant to get me to a place. We got the torment portion of it. We got the fact that Paul wanted to beg for that thing to be removed. When Paul got his no, Paul had a corresponding action to the denial. His corresponding, well, God's response in denial is no, I'm not moving it because of the fact that my grace is sufficient, right? So we talked about the sufficiency of grace. Now let's talk about the fact that it's for power is perfected in my weakness, okay? So let's talk about the word power, power. So we've been told, we've been equipped with grace, right? So now power, dunamis power, right? Power, it is the ability or the miracle, it is the ruler. Tell me this is not Holy Spirit. Tell me it will, God will confirm exactly what he is saying. Y'all, I'm not making this up. This is literally scripture. I'm not giving you no commentary. I'm giving you what Holy Spirit gave me about the what the word says. This is what I'm going to read no article. This is straight revelation. This is how he gave it to me. Power, ability, miracle, ruler, the extended meaning of a person of supernatural being who has administrative power. Y'all missed that portion. What? My grace is sufficient for you. My spirit within you is suffice to keep you, right? For power, for power, what kind of power? Wonder working power, miraculous working power. This is not your power. This is supernatural power. So when you understand that the grace, my spirit within you is suffice to keep you, to strengthen you, to ward off, to lift you up, that power, his power, authority, Holy Spirit's power, supernatural power, administrative power, 
Selena is the amazing administrator. Why? Because she keeps things in order for me. She keeps things in order. She knows what's happening. She knows how to put places and pieces and parts where they need to go. How much greater is God and his very spirit to administer your life? You try to control your life. But he says power, administrating power, power to get your life together if you get out the way, power to literally put things in order if you get out the way and take your hands off of it. Quit going back to that person. Leave them grown kids alone in God's hands. Please leave them grown kids alone in God's hands. You can no longer administrate. You can pray, but let God administrate. You're the one in the way. Administrative power. Supernatural power. Power, dunamis, right? The root word. The ability. Power. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. Unlimited. God's unlimited power, Okay. It literally says in the root word that humans have limited ability, but God is unlimited. Power. What is po power is perfected. My Holy Spirit power. My Holy Spirit ability. My What I can do and you can't because my ways are above your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. You're limited. I love you. Let me parent you, Holy Spirit said. Please let me do for you what you're trying to do for that child. Oh, y'all, come on. That thing... That, that that needs to be perfected, perfected. What does that mean? Oh, this word. This is where I literally lost it yesterday. I didn't even think I, I typed it. The word perfected means it is finished. The same it is finished when Jesus gave up the ghost. Huh. It is fit. It's done. It is a completion of the contract. So wait a minute. <laughs> what you saying, Holy Spirit? That people need to understand that they have what they need, right? Stephanie, let them boys travel their course and you're not their God. Even if they bump their head and do some stuff that's real stupid. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying and love them. My grace is sufficient. Suffice you my grace. For power, my power, is what is perfected. It's perfected. It is executed. It brings to a finish. It finishes everything you can't finish. It does what it is that I've perfected in you because the thorn had a purpose in the first place to bring you to a place, whether it bring you to me, to purpose, to the expected end that is promised for us in Jeremiah. Literally perfected. It brings it to a close. Literally the same thing Jesus says on the cross. Okay? The same fulfillment about salvation is paid for it's finished okay in weakness i'm just gonna put these papers wherever at this point weakness i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm almost done for real weakness in weakness in let's go back to the beginning i didn't even realize let's go let's go back to where i started from good preaching right go back to the origin the original point here we go in my weakness in the thorn place in my limp in what appears to be apparent with this thorn the fact that i want it removed but god isn't doing that the fact that god has a purpose the weakness his power him his grace suffice his holy spirit suffices he does what he need to do for us when we're not able to do for ourselves in the weakness in our limited capacity to understand in our weakness right even in our corrupt desire in our weakness even in our trials and tribulations the root word of weakness literally means to strengthen one's soul or to confirm. So the very thing. I'm put this over here. I think I'm going to put this over here. Holy Spirit said that he gave me this word. Because many people have been taught to not be vulnerable with the weakness. Many of you are carrying burdens. And many of you are carrying so much stuff. But have been taught to put on a mask. Have been taught religion have been taught fake it till you make it even faith it till you make it when holy spirit is saying that you're stuck at the problem when i am the solution and if you're transparent there'll be such a glory that is exalted in that situation some of y'all have been dealing with that thing for years 
Some of y'all have been sitting with that thing holding on to it for years. Some of y'all literally will act like it's all good. But do you not understand that it is the exact route to the place that he is trying to get you? That thing that you dress up and make up and clean up and, 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 and employ it up and business it up. I'm not saying those things are not business. All that external stuff that you do to try to validate for yourself. Some of that stuff that you do ain't even what you're supposed to be doing. But because somebody told you to do it, because somebody said that you should do it, because you're still fighting to try to find affirmation and validation and confirmation and identification by man, you're stuck in a place because religion has taught you to, you got it together. Don't you dare. Don't, 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 don't tell that to the people. How dare you cry amongst the people? Look, I've been, I've been there, y'all. Like, God, I've been there. Mm -mm. Not no more. Not no more. Not on my watch. If you watching this at any point, not on my watch. Vulnerability transparency understanding that god is sufficient if my life serves nothing else this is why people have said yeah you will trans i am transparent i got nothing to hide <laughs> i got nothing to hide i got nothing to hide when i tell you that holy spirit when i've been through some things in my life literally when god has broke me so far down when that thorn beat me up so bad that I literally was making decisions ready to literally almost destroy my whole life, my whole life. Because what I thought wasn't working the way I wanted it to work because I thought I had did enough to get there. And he says, but I'm going to suffice you my grace so that you can let that thing, that seed that's been planted within you has to break. There's a place where only he can do what he can do. I'm not God. Your pastors are not God. God is God. Holy Spirit is God showing up to church, even showing up to Bible study, showing up to emergence, expanded emergence, 2021, whatever. This is great. And it is a vehicle, but I'm not God. If you're just literally jumping from place to place and channel to channel and profit to profit and conference to conference and to every seeking. But what you need, you have the very thing you think is supposed you think it's going to take you out or you can't bear no more. It's because you're trying to carry the weight. My grace suffice. My grace, suffice you my grace. My power wants to do it. Trust the process. Either he's God or he's not. Right? Understanding. <laughs> yeah, has already won without adequate strength. Thank you, Ashley. Literally, understanding that at this crossroad of familiarity and newness, you have a decision because the gift we have, another is choice. God is such a great good God that he allows us to live by the consequence of our choice. And consequence isn't always a negative word. Consequence is just a direct result of what you choose. Consequence could be great. Salvation is a consequence of surrendering unto Jesus. Right? So your choice will dictate the trajectory. You can go back to familiarity. You can make that phone call if you want to. But satisfied flesh is always sorry. Right? You can keep fighting and have, I don't know who this is for, some of your health issues are literally not as a result of your body, but it's a result of what you try to control. I don't know who I'm talking to. Half of your health issues are not a result, okay, of, 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 of body things. It's a result of you trying to be in control, of you holding the weight. It's hard to walk with excess weight. It's hard to walk with excess weight. So Paul says, Paul says, his cor corresponding response as we make it back to the circumference of the text. Therefore, therefore, because I understand that God has a purpose, because I understand that this thing ain't meant to kill me, because I understand that even when it doesn't feel good, that my daddy has a plan therefore because even though it may feel like it's beating me up it might be beating me down right therefore I can stay humble and therefore because I know that the grace has been sufficient that his grace continues to be sufficient that his grace will always be sufficient that suffice to me to you to us to his children those of us who are his suffice be his grace 
and that the power we need, the authority we need is in our vulnerability, in our letting it go. Not in having the answers. Stop thinking letting go means you have the answer. That's for three of y'all. Paul's corresponding response to that is, not I'm going to sit here a little bit more. Not am I going to sit here and try to ask him again. No, he says, therefore, I delight. I delight. Because if they fire me, then God is about to open another door. If they leave me, then God had something better for me. If they literally turn their back on me, then I didn't need them at this place. If they literally are not here, then I'm not going to hold on to it because it's not for me. I delight in the weakness. I delight in the vulnerability. You have to know me to know. When it hits the fan, I promise y'all, we've been talking about intimacy. I don't just talk this, y'all. Whether it be physical, y'all, I got I literally did a video a couple weeks about this. Whether it be physical stuff, whether it be relational stuff, kid stuff, whether it be life because life is life. Ain't nobody here perfect. Come on, y'all. Like, I don't even got time for that. Daddy, whatever you're doing. The three Hebrew boys literally say, I'm not bowing to the enemy. Mm -mm. And I believe that if you throw me in the fire of refinement or persecution, no matter of how you look at it, right? That he will keep me. Coldest line, one of the coldest lines in the Bible. But even if he don't, I'm not going to bow. Even if he doesn't remove the thorn. Even if it doesn't change. I know he's able. I will keep myself vulnerable enough and real enough for him to show up. For him to show up. And if I serve no other purpose than to be a living witness and testimony of the fact He's never failed me. He's never failed me. Even when it didn't look like anything I thought. Because he had a plan. He had a plan, guys. I couldn't die in process. If I died in process, I wouldn't be able to see the blessing of watching my oldest daughter getting herself together. I wouldn't be able to see the blessing of my children. I wouldn't be able to see the manifestation of this. So whatever that is can't take you out, guys. If you're listening, you're listening on purpose. There's something within you that that thing is serving a purpose for. This word has been on me so heavy, you guys. There is something that God is trying to get to you. God is bigger than that problem. God is bigger than that problem. God is bigger than that problem. He's in control. I promise y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. Paul says, so I'm going to delight in my weakness. Not just in my weakness, but here we go. This is how cold Paul is. This is, I'm not only going to delight in my weakness. He says, I'm going to delight in the insults when they're trying to talk about you. When they say you don't even sound the same, look the same, act the same. In the insults, in the insolence, in the wrong, in the injury. When people literally saying stuff what they want to. Okay? I'm going to delight in the weaknesses. I'm going to delight in the insults. I'm going to delight in the hardship. Okay? Hardship. Imposed by circumstance. Imposed by law. <laughs> right? Imposed by customs or argument, calamity, distress, by hardship. I'm a delight, Paul says, as a, cor a, cor a corresponding res response to the denial of his request of the removal of that thing. Paul's corresponding action is, I'm going to delight in my weakness, my ins the insults, the hardship, and even the persecution. And the persecution are for y'all who like to run away. Persecution literally is a thing that makes you run. If the enemy can't take you out of it or take it away from you, he will make you give it up or run away from your purpose. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. I'm a, he says, I'm a delight. I'm a delight in all of it. And there was one more. And of course, do I need to pull my Bible out? Because it was in my notes. Oh, there it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delight in my weaknesses. Rejoice in my weaknesses. Boast about my weaknesses. Actually, I'm going to bring glory to what is weak so he can have the platform to show off. 
literally in the weaknesses and the insults in the hardships right in the hardships in the insults the persecution and the difficulties the narrow places total reliance so at the crossroad of familiarity and at the crossroad of newness what you gonna do all i can do is deliver the word wherever you at however this hits you however holy spirit is ministering to you his grace is suffice this is part of his grace when he stops us to give us this message to be like hold up come on come on come back come back <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to tell you, you're not going to die in this. I'm trying to tell you I have a purpose for this. I'm trying to tell you that there's something I'm doing. Let me be God. Let me be God. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you for your perfected plan. Father, I thank you that your ways are so much greater than our ways. And that your thoughts are so much greater and above our thoughts. I thank you that you knew before you even formed me, before you formed us, before you formed those that are watching now replay. You knew. You've always known. And the love that is expressed in the fact that your grace is always available and sufficient is mind-blowing to me, Daddy. It's mind-blowing to me the amount of patience that you have, Daddy, to wait on us. To send message after message and opportunity after opportunity and covering after covering and message after message and whisper after whisper and presence and over... Like, you do this constantly for us. And for that, I thank you. I thank you, Daddy, that you make ways out of no ways. I thank you, Daddy, that you have the ability to make that thing disappear. <laughs> you make you have the ability to make that thing move, and yet you have the ability to let that thing stay to do what it needs to do. Daddy, would you do me a favor? I ask that your spirit would continue to move, not just in the minds of your people, but in the homes of your people. The daddy, as they take one step forward, you would meet them and that your hand would usher them into a place. Daddy, those that feel alone, those that feel alone, daddy, would you just show up and let them know that they're not, that you haven't forsaken them, that they haven't done anything that could take them so far away, that you still love them. I come against uh, 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 guilt. I come against shame. I come against false teaching. I come against this resentment that has kept people in barriers. I come against unforgiveness. I come against the, the, the things that the enemy tried to do to take you out. I speak healing and peace over your people, God. I speak breakthrough over your people, God. I speak encounters with your spirit over your people, God. I speak a new level of faith over your people, God. I speak the manifested presence of your glory over your people, God. Daddy, I know you hear me, Daddy. I know what you have said to me and father i sit with expectation with news with re reports of of what you're doing in their lives and i thank you daddy i thank you for tgs because it builds my faith god because you're doing a work that i'm not capable of doing that you show up in the lives of your people in this space just simply because you're god and i thank you daddy so daddy continue to be who you are in their lives in our lives continue to show up and show out Keep us in the sufficiency of your grace, Daddy. We, we, we surrender ourselves to you. We give you an unreserved yes. We ask you whatever it is that Thor needs to do, Daddy. We will put our eyes and fix it back on you, Daddy. Knowing that you are the perfecter. You are the author. You are the finisher of our faith, Daddy. That you know what it is that you're doing. So, Father, have your way. <laughs> Holy Spirit, have your way. Oh, because I know that you're able. I know that you're able because you're showing me how able you are. So, Daddy, I extend that to your people. I extend that to your people, Daddy. I extend that to your people, Daddy. I extend that to your people, Daddy. I thank you, Daddy. I thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you in the name of Jesus. And I declare it so. I declare it so.
I declare it so. I declare it so. I declare it so. It's on you to receive it. I declare it so. I've done my part. I let this word go. It's been sitting on me. And I don't know who it's for. Y'all, you can email me. I've been delayed on the emails because I had to shut it down this past weekend. But I'm getting back. You can email me at Maria at TGS community.org you can email selena you can inbox me um you can do that i know there's a couple of y'all um i ain't even gonna i ain't even gonna belabor this point if you want and 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 selena i don't know if you're still on if somebody's still on ashley i don't know um if you're looking for covering if you need a church home um if you need somebody to walk with you um, through all this and if you have a pastor and you have a church stay there until the Lord tell you to move Let's not do that. But if you're walking right now unless it's the Lord tell you to move if, But if you're walking right now with no covering and you just need a community to walk with y'all Text join TGS all caps to 44144 Okay All caps join TGS or email me and tell me um And, and we'll reach out to you. Okay. Um, and and if you want to give it is Cash App TGS Community. I'm, I'm done. Those of you's man, it, I, last night was so crazy that somebody literally sent like this whole offering for last night out of the book club. So when God is moving, He's doing it. He knows what we need to get done. Um, I'm not even get, nope. I'm not even getting into that. Mm -mm, stop. Nope. Here we go. What I need y'all to do tonight is sit with this. Ask Holy Spirit, where is it that you need to move from? Actually, just start to fix your eyes on him. Some of y'all don't even need to ask no more because you know. Go back in your word. Go back and read the book of John. You know, we're talking about intimacy. The book of John is in, in Bible study. You know, um, go read the book of John. Go sit with Holy Spirit. Go get in your in your secret place. Go sit with, in your secret place. Let the Spirit of the Lord minister to you tonight. Let him minister to you tonight. Um, and then let me know if he releases you because it builds my faith. I love you guys. And I really mean that. I don't say that out of the side of my mouth. Trust and believe that. If you're watching this live, you're watching this replay, I pray and I know. I don't even I declare and I know that you're gonna receive manifestation out of this word because I know how heavy it was on me. So I love you guys. I really pray that it blessed you. If you can on Friday, what's today? Wait, I don't even know what day it is anymore. I feel like I've been teaching all week. Friday night, we're on intimacy. Um join us. We're literally 7 o'clock. Um, but may God continue to keep you until then. Watch the devotions. This this page is literally meant to encourage you, not just to scroll through. The devotions are intentional. Everything is intentional. So don't just scroll through it to say you hear. No, go ahead and take time because what you might need to have um, given to you might be even in the midst of a devotion or in the midst of a post. But I love you guys. I love you guys. I love you guys. I love you guys. May God continue to do what he does in your life until we see each other again on Friday. You guys have a good night.